All right, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about layers in this video. We're still going to be working with Pixlr E, but I'm going to show you how to treat it in a way you can color and you can do these fancy effects like the gradients, where it changes from one color to another, or different textures in a coloring book page. First thing I'm going to do is I am going to make a new image. I actually have another tab already open. I'm going to create new. I'm going to put my first and last name, and I'm just going to call it coloring page. I still want the background turned on, so this dot has to be all the way to the right. I still want the background white. Now I'm going to hit create. So layers work a little bit like having different pieces of paper all stacked on top of each other. Except with these pieces of paper, you can see through them until you add something to them that is opaque that you can't see through. I'm going to start with adding an image. Mm. In case you need to know how to download an image, let's go ahead and start there. Um, Crayola.com has all sorts of free coloring book pages. So all you have to do is find an image you like. I found this one that's called Cabin in the Snow. Right click and hit Save Image As. I've already saved it, so it's already up there. But you want to make sure that the file type, it says Save As Type, is either JPEG or PNG. Those are types of files that our program can open. There's a lot of different file types out there. You want to make sure it's one that we can open with a art program like Pixlr E. And all you have to do is hit save. I'm going to hit cancel because I've already saved it. I don't need to save it on my computer again. But now I'm ready to put it in my Pixlr file. I'm going to create a new layer. It's what this plus sign does. It creates a new layer. I'm going to click the picture that looks like mountains with a moon. That way I can do an image layer. Now, for some reason it hasn't been working from there, so we'll just take the long route. You just pick the file you like. Now I have my cabin in the snow. It's pretty small compared to the rest of my canvas, but I can make it bigger. All right. So now it's pretty big. I have plenty I can color with. I want you to look over here at the layers. So this side of the screen has a lot of useful information, the right side. It's got the Navigate menu, which will show you your entire canvas in the small thumbnail. You can use the slider to zoom in or out. But what's really important with this project is that we have the layers. We have the background layer, that's layer one. And then we have Cabin in the Snow, and it shows a little tiny thumbnail of what that layer looks like. It's very small, so it's kind of hard to see. But if you look at it, you can tell that there's all of this white around it. We can't tell so much on here because our canvas is white. But anything that is white on this layer we're not going to be able to see through. So if I color on a layer underneath it, I won't be able to see it. So what I want to do is I want to get rid of that white. First thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to change the name of this layer. So right click it. I'm going to change it line art because the only thing I want on this layer is the lines. All of those black lines for the coloring book page, that's the line art. Now I can go to my wand select tool. The wand select will pick all of the colors within a certain tolerance. So right now I have it set to 32. Uh, that's That can be fine. I want you to actually raise it to 100 though, because even though you can't see it, there's a little area between the black and the white, where it's kind of gray. 
I want to be able to get that so I have as much of the black line left as possible. So I'm going to change the tolerance to 100. And I'm going to turn off contiguous. Contiguous means that it shares a border. So if I leave it on and I select, say, the roof, it's only going to select the roof because there's a border that goes around it. I want it to select everything on my layer that's white, so I'm going to turn that off. And I can click anywhere that's white, and now I have everything on that layer that's white with a tolerance of 100 selected. I want to get rid of it, so I'm going to go to Edit and Cut. So a couple things happen here. The snowflakes almost disappeared. So maybe my tolerance was too high for this particular image. The rest of it looks good, but these snowflakes and even the wreath, they kind of disappeared. So I'm going to try to undo that. I'm going to go all the way back to where I changed the name of the layer. And I'm going to lower my tolerance. Sometimes it takes a little bit of trial and error. That undo button is very useful with this type of program. So I lower the tolerance to 50. I cut it in half to see if I can snag more of those snowflakes. Everything else stayed the same. So let's see how that does. Got my selection. Go to cut. All right, and I can still see most of the snowflakes. I may have to go in on the liner layer and kind of touch up, especially here, with my pen or with draw tool so that when I go to fill in those layers, they don't disappear, they don't blend in with the background. If I try to change the sky, I want to be able to change just the sky, not the snowflakes. So right now though, I have a pretty good line art layer. I'm just going to pause here and do some touch-ups so we can move to the next step.